We'll also look back at the magical year of a magical player, and we'll wrap up the 91 campaign from Coach Moeller's perspective. All that and more coming up next. Everybody and welcome to Michigan Replay. Michigan 31, Ohio State 3. Nobody thought it was going to be that big, but Gary Moeller, you got to be a happy guy. That sounds good. Huh? Doesn't it? Yeah, it still sounds good. You never yes. thought it would be that big, did you, against Ohio State? No, no. Usually it's a little closer. You know, it's always a two, three point game. And last year it came down to the last second field goal. But uh, this year we kind of took command early and our defense hung in there. So it was a very good victory. These are a lot easier to live through than like last year when you had to win it with no time left, huh? Yeah, a little easier, particularly in the fourth <laughs> quarter. You aren't worried so much, but uh, you never know what will happen. And at halftime, all we talked about was, hey, remember Notre Dame, Tennessee, and Tennessee coming back so those things can happen. But And we got started off very fast, Jim. Here we hit Ricky Powers up the middle on a handoff, and uh, he has a good gain here. So that's a good way to start the game. You didn't use the pass much because they were really taking away. You had to run on them, right? Right. And the running game was working well. Here we throw in our third possession, our third uh, play, I think, and we hit Yale Van Dyne, and he has a good gain here. Then Jesse Johnson breaks loose. Ricky had run a couple times, brought Jesse, and now here we get the ball knocked loose, Jim. We had that happen too many times. We cannot lose that ball and fumbles. Now you get stopped, but Mr. Trickery goes to work. Well, we, we had this play in, and we've been practicing it and waiting for the right time, and I thought the right time was now. I thought he scored on the play, but they put it on the one-inch line and give us a first down, and then we hit Bernie up the middle and for a big touchdown. And that was a big score, and because the play worked, you know, you're always a hero when they work, but it's happened the other way, too. And that's a play that you got from Florida State, right? Well, it was a very similar play that they ran against us in their first possession when uh, we got beat by them. They come back here and they hit Ellis for one and then our defense plays a little bit better. We give up a lot of yards and a lot of time possession, but we kept them out of the end zone and that's a big feat when you don't allow them to score a touchdown. And here's one of the things, you covered well and you forced the quarterback to run and he couldn't yeah. get out there and he, get the first down. He got a couple positive yards, but really that's what you'd call a coverage sack and uh, we're happy with that obviously. Here on third and short, our second possession, we're scoring or going Picking up a first down in midfield, we fumble the ball and they get it. And really it leads to their only score of the day when they kick a field goal later on. And that was what really made you mad. That one, you know, really got you hot because you can't do that in a big game. No, you, you, you just got to hang on to the football. I don't care if they're trying to strip it or whatever happens. To, it's just too valuable. But on third down plays, your guys come through. Our guys came through, and I thought our linebacking core with Towns and Anderson, the rest of the kids, really played well. We had some good play defensively. And then here's a field goal that probably made it by a couple inches, but he had the win with him, and it made it 7-3. Makes it 7-3, still very much a ball game. The defense responds again. Right, here we come up, and uh, they roll out and overthrow a receiver, and Lance Dotton comes up with a key interception and returns it. I don't know, 25, 30 yards here and puts us in great field position. You had some problems <laughs> with delay of games and timeouts and stuff right before this touchdown, as a matter of fact. Talk right, we got that. us down to no timeouts. Here Jesse goes in from uh, about one yard out, but we had a little trouble with that in our communication because they were disguising coverages and we were trying to get the ball some to Desmond, then we would pa uh, run it off instead. So. They had a uh, lot of double coverage. And here you see Brian Townsend making a big play, and Otis Williams reco uh, recovering a fumble uh, when we knocked it loose from Snow. Although they held us, uh, you know, right there, and we kicked the field goal. And J.D., as you indicated earlier, he had a good week last week. He was really hitting the ball on the money, and hopefully that will continue through the Rose Bowl. And that was into the wind, and then this is the big play of big plays. This yes. is a play I coach all the time, Jim. Well, I'm this is, this you're is the me. coach on this I'm one? I'm the coach of this one right here, <laughs> so you can watch it. Just sit back and relax. Isn't that exciting? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, do you just like to watch this? Desmond yeah. Howard on the loose? He, he is a special player, and, you know, if anything... What had to be said, if you wanted to put the icing on the cake for a Heisman Trophy winner, that run right there may have done the whole thing. You never know, and it's such a difficult thing to do, but he is a great player. You bet he's a great player, and then you come back, and once again, you know, your defense gets the right. job done. Get a little pressure here. They fumble the ball, but uh, luckily for them, they recover it. Uh, you'd like to get one more before halftime, get close to 30, but... Uh, you know, again, here we have Brian Townsend. He was excited, Jim. It's really funny. You know, here's a kid 
that played against Carlos Snow, who is their great tailback, and or they played together in elementary school. And so he was so excited about this game and the fact he gets to play against it. Well, Brian Townsend had maybe the best game of his life, didn't he? Probably so. And, and the trademark of this whole team is one thing. The senior class kept playing better and better as individuals each and every week. And then you're going to have a great team. The Wolverines led at halftime over Ohio State, and a lot of it due to that fake field goal. Let's talk to the two principals who were involved in the trickery. I think it was the defense, and uh, we have two options, either kick the ball or pitch it to McThomas. I wasn't thinking that we were going to run it, you know, the first time out, and um, I thought I heard Lemon, and I saw the, ta the, the tight end take off, so I was like, oh, okay, this is me. Mo was yelling, that's a first down, so we went back out there and checked it out, and we made it by about that much, so it's a good time. Excellent blocks before my uh, punt return team, especially the last block by Dwayne Ware, Ware to spring me to my left to turn into a footweight race. Was excellent. So it was just a good effort by the punt return unit. Desmond having another outstanding game, but at halftime it was just 24 3 Michigan. As you indicated earlier, that's not a big enough lead. You still had to be concerned. What was your focus going into the second half? Well, the thing we talked about, Jim, is I reminded him of the game uh, two years ago. We were up 21 to nothing, and it come back and got a tight game. And then, obviously, the Notre Dame-Tennessee game a couple weeks ago where Tennessee came back and, and coming out was the third, nervous about that. Right. Coming out the third quarter, they really possessed the ball. They, they marched the ball some 15 plays or so, and there's Snow uh, gets a big game. Herb Street comes around on a rollout. It's Callaway for about 11 yards for wide open receiver. And then we get here, we make a great play. Brian Townsend has him right here. You have to keep a guy like that inside, though, because he's a scrambler type. Doesn't makes a good play here to snow on the sideline. Did the change of quarterback from Graham to Herb Street make you change strategy at all? Well, a little bit, because we looked for more option, although they didn't run a lot of option, but we had more of a mobile quarterback back there and what we assumed would be less of a passing threat. However, he hit some good passes, as he does right there to Carlos Snow. Here, Brian Townsend makes a great play. Gets hurt on the play, but dies over a would-be blocker to make the play. And then on fourth and five, get a little pressure on him, and Ritter comes in well. Then Eric Anderson, we make a big stop there. And then we come back offensively. We won't have the ball once in the third quarter, and then we got smart here and threw another <laughs> one up to Desmond for about 50 yards. <laughs> this so. is your coaching again, right? Right. This is my, right here. This, that's the part I coach. <laughs> no, <laughs> Desmond makes a great play. He can get the balls normally a lot of people can't. Nate plays. We go in for a, our final, what would be our final touchdown here. And here's Wheatley going over from about six yards out and getting in. So that was a big score there. That gave us a little breathing room. Knew now that if our defense didn't give up any big plays, we were probably in pretty good shape. And the defense, again, had a situation where they were playing, not prevent, but they just didn't want to give up the big play, which forced Ohio State into some things they probably didn't yeah. want to do. Jim, what you'd like to say here is, okay, let's blitz the daylights out of them. <laughs> but then you think, okay, if we blitz them, that's the only way they can get back in the game with big plays. So let's be a little smart and a little conservative. And I would have liked to have gotten the ball back a little more. But anytime you play Ohio State, and never really let him cross your goal line. That's that's a good feat. And here it is, the last play we'll show in the highlights, a turnover that killed Ohio State and really put it away for you. Right, we knocked the ball loose twice from Snow today, and that was one of them. And then we got out of there. In fact, we hit Desmond on another long one to get out away from our end zone thing. So kids overall played a great game. I'm very, very proud of them. 31-3, to three, outright Big Ten champions headed to the Rose Bowl. Those are the two things you wanted to have said together, wasn't it? Exactly. And now I'd like to add to that Rose Bowl <laughs> champs. And well, you're never this satisfied. This season, well, you can't be as a coach. And this season, obviously, is not over. And I really look forward to this game, knowing that we're probably meeting maybe the best team in the country. What about this ball club, this Michigan team? Uh, coming back after the Florida State loss, you said one thing, that these kids would never lose their focus. And... They wrapped up the Rose Bowl against Illinois, came into Ohio State, and there was no question, in your mind anyway, I know, they were focused on Ohio State. They weren't looking past them. Right. I, I told them on uh, <clears throat> Sunday or Monday, really, when we met, I said, uh, you know, we got an excuse. Yeah, we wrapped up the Big Ten title. Now we can lose to Ohio State. But you and I both know that's just an excuse. Everybody says we can't keep our focus. They're trying to talk us into something we aren't allowed to do. No. 
We got new, we know what we have to do, and we know how hard we have to prepare. There's no Rose Bowl talk. Tell your mom and dad to call my secretary. <laughs> let her handle all the, any kind. But that was the kind of the gist of the thing. And the kids pay attention. And that's very special to this group. Yeah, they sure did. And, of course, one of the guys that's very special involved in this group is Desmond Howard. Don't go away. We'll have a feature on the Magic Man next. But first, we hear from a defensive hero against Ohio State who sums up a great year. I can't believe this year. I can't believe everything that's going on. You know, the main things we wanted to be outright champions. I didn't want Iowa to share the ring with us at all. And uh, this is talking. This is, you know, this is going out in style. We got one more game to win now. And then, you know, we do that. And then it's really going to be great icing on the cake. Desmond Howard. He's fast, he's elusive, he's magic. And for the last two years at Michigan, he's been unbelievable. Go back to fire for it. They went for it all. A guiding pass for a touchdown. Holy cow. Would you believe this? You're unbelievable. I came in with the mentality that Jamie Morris was a small guy. He did it in the Big Ten, so I probably can be a tailback in the Big Ten. But I never had my heart set on just being a running back, and that's why I'm a receiver today. You're unbelievable. I like to say I'm my hardest coach. I think I coached Desmond Howard harder than anybody else could, and I'm my, my worst critic, so I have a lot of pressure on myself just for me on Saturdays anyway. So it was not a big deal to uh, have to deal with, you know, high expectations for you to perform on Saturday. It was just a matter of going out and doing it. Total concentration on the ball, and next thing I know, I'm off my feet and I'm flying through the air. <laughs> so it just happens. It really does. But there's much more to Desmond Howard than football highlights. The other Desmond will finish undergraduate studies in May. He wants to go on to graduate school and become a teacher, a counselor. It is on that field where Desmond Howard would like to work his best magic. To make it a brighter tomorrow, we have to uh, educate our children. And a lot of things, a lot of atrocities out there. Um, work against education, even though you may receive a proper education in school, you're only in school maybe um, six or seven hours of the day, then once you get back at home and go out to the streets, the same atrocities are there, which are reversing what you learn in school. So I think you have to have not only positive role models, but role models who know what they're talking about. I mean, because anybody can walk up to a kid and say, it's okay to say no to drugs, or, you know, practice safe sex. But I think you have to take a different approach, approach them from a different angle that could really um, hit home with the child. And to, to learn these angles, I think you have to further your education. Desmond Howard is special on and off the field. And despite being called Magic since fifth grade, some have suggested he dropped that nickname in light of Magic Johnson's shocking retirement from the NBA because he tested positive for the HIV virus. Desmond admires Johnson's incredible basketball talents and his courage in facing his problem. This magic also thinks, though, that that magic wouldn't mind another magic in the state. I would think with magic's personality, if he was to not even sit down and talk to me, but maybe look at some of my interviews and see what I have to say and watch me perform on the field, I think he would embrace me because we share some of the similar type of uh, qualities and characteristics, like, for instance, our big smile. <laughs> There's no question that he's pretty special, isn't he, Mo? No question about it. And Jim, he got that nickname. You know, he was an outstanding basketball player and probably why he went to the high school that he went to. And uh, you that's where he got it. Yeah, you recruited him off the basketball floor, both he and uh, Elvis Grubach, right? Right. Well, Desmond was more of a football player probably than a basketball player his last year. But that's how we got Elvis's watching him on basketball and then two drives that he had in high school because Elvis was a wishbone quarterback in high school, <laughs> believe it or not. You talk about a once-in-a-lifetime player. 
Is that Desmond? He's one of those guys that doesn't come around very often, and he's a very special kid. He has great, when he talks about pressure on himself, self-imposed pressure, he has, he has great ambitions, and, and he believes in something. He really does everything he can to accomplish it, and that way he's a special guy. And you got to understand, Jim, he is close to a three-point student. I want to say 2'8 in that area in LSNA, and we're very proud of him. Great, great player, and Desmond is just one of a group of Wolverines you can honor this coming week at the Michigan football bust. Tickets are still available for the bust that will honor the 1991 undefeated Big Ten outright champions and Rose Bowl team. One loss, but non-conference. We won't let that go. Make sure, if you want to get tickets, call 313. Really is the team. It says a lot about our team because there hasn't been any dissension among the team as far as uh, people getting a lot of individual recognition. Uh, I think because uh, we are such a close team and, and uh, when somebody gets, gets an award or, or gets a recognition, uh, he, he gives out proper uh, credit. He knows that he's not the only person out there. Just like Desmond says, he's not the only person on offense. Uh, I'm not the only person on defense. Uh, you got to have 10 other guys playing. Pontiac's journey down Pikes Peak is legendary. Well, championship, we achieved most of our goals, and uh, we're just looking for that big game down there in Pasadena. Big game in Pasadena, of course, is the Rose Bowl against the Washington Huskies, but we'll talk about them later in coming weeks on Michigan Replay. In the meantime, we have stayed away for the most part on Michigan Replay about the awards because we kind of agree with you, it's a team game. And yet, let's face it, Desmond is the front runner for the Heisman. Greg Skrepnik is involved in the Lombardi and the Outland, and Dick Butkus Award, Eric Anderson, is right there in the running. So you got three guys up for three major awards. That's a pretty nice deal. Right. I, I think that's super, Jim. And the thing I want to say about that, first of all, the whole team had a part of that. And if they get one of those honors, I'm going to feel a little bit a part of that, you know, and not just being the head coach, but I want all the coaches to, and I think the players receiving the award feel that way. You said something after the game Saturday, I think, that was indicative. You said that this is really a special group, this team, and, and part of that acceptance of the awards by the individual and all the kids getting some credit, I think, says something about the character of kid you got. Right, and, and the reason the team is so important, unless you have an outstanding year and a good record, normally you don't get all those awards. And particularly three guys up from one team is special. Now you're going to say, well, if you got three guys up, how'd you lose a game? I know that's the next question. But my next, that wasn't, yeah. what happened in that Florida right. State game? I understand that. But at the same time, the team's going to share that. If Desmond Howard wins the Heisman, or Skrepnik the Lombardi, or Anderson the Butkus, the team is going to share in that, believe me. And they're going to be proud because they know the vein in which our kids have accepted those awards. And that's why it's been a good team. Jim, when you can have your seniors, okay, playing their best games at the end of their career, that's special. That's why you can be good. It's a special group. We hope you all join us next week right here on Michigan Replay. We've got plenty of more things to talk about. See you then right here, Michigan Replay, same time, same place.